Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, this is here. For this video, I will be answering a question that I've been asked a million times, which is, how should you study or learn Japanese? Please excuse that. Part of living in Japan, people. But anyway, um, before I give you my tips and advice, I first want to start off, I'm not an expert, nor am I made fluent in Japanese. I'm telling you my own, honest to God, true advice on what I personally used to study and learn. And I also want to give you some tips before I get into that. So, first things first, giving you some background of myself, I came to Japan not knowing how to speak a lick of Japanese. I could not read, I could not write. I had never gone to any type of language school for that matter. The only language knowledge that I had was I used to take Spanish um, from the age of eight. I came to Japan at 20 years old. And yeah, I felt really stupid aside of all of my classes. Um, I quickly lost motivation because everybody at my school spoke English and was trying to learn English despite it being mostly Japanese people. And on top of that, I quickly got into relationships, started going to parties, etc. And once again, everyone was either speaking English or was trying to learn English. Thus, I felt discouraged when I was living in Tokyo, which in case you don't know, you can easily get around in Japan without Japanese, like, no Japanese ability whatsoever. Everything that's of importance, and even things that aren't of importance, are generally written in English. So, yeah, the best comparison I can give you is, think about how in the US, if you look at most of the food and products that we use, they oftentimes have Spanish instructions on the back, or the name written in Spanish too. We don't pay it much mind because we know how to read the English version of it, but Japan is basically like that. Just switch the Spanish with English, and yeah, anything of importance, you can pretty much get English translation right on the container, bottle, whatever. Announcements are normally made in both Japanese and English, so yeah, you don't really think to use it so much. You can just search using it very fast, especially if you don't already speak Japanese. With that said and done, these were all reasons that made me procrastinate and become lazy. I only felt motivated to learn Japanese when I started working at a new cafe, and the Asian girls that I worked with, although they had an advantage because they went to language schools and they already, you know, understood kanji because they were Chinese. I was like, hey, this girl only been for three months and she could speak better Japanese than I can. And that honestly motivated me to spend a lot more time and a lot more money um, with learning Japanese. Do not be fooled. Well, living in Japan most certainly is a huge help and is honestly what mostly taught me what I know. Um, it's not enough on its own. You have to make a conscious effort to speak and use it because not only will most people want to speak with you and um, not English, and sorry, not Japanese, but in English, but even when you use Japanese yourself, you will oftentimes be met with English. Or people might have difficulty understanding you, thus you need to learn how to adjust your accent and make yourself sound more like you made it. But before I get all branched off into this, um, I just wanted to say once again, I am not native fluent, I am not a perfect Japanese speaker, I have not passed the JLPT in one, I'm just telling you what works for me, and how to get your foot in the door and get started with learning Japanese. So, first things first, before you do anything, you need to be honest with yourself and decide what is your purpose in learning Japanese, and set some serious goals for yourself. They don't need to be very deep, such as I want to learn, you know, 30 words a day type thing, not like that. But I mean, why are you trying to learn Japanese? It's totally okay if your reason is, I want to be able to watch anime without using subtitles. Okay, cool, you have your reason. Now you also need to decide, what is your goal? That pretty much answers the goal. You want to be able to speak Japanese so that you can watch, you know, without subtitles. Maybe your goal is you want to be able to watch pirated anime and I have to wait, you know, for whatever version to come out. Or be able to read it <laughs> before they get the English translation of it, something like that. And I'm not going to get into all the legal stuff. So what I am saying is, now you have a reason for why you want to learn, and you have a goal. So your goal is to be able to speak, read, write, whatever, well enough where you can, you know, read this entire manga book without the need of English translations to be available for you. Maybe your goal is you want to be able to work in Japan and work a non-English you know, teaching job. Whatever the case is, you need a clear goal, and you need to decide what steps you need to take to get yourself there. After you've done that, the rest should come to you rather easy, um, easily um, because now you have motivation. You know your purpose in learning, you know why, and you know what your goals are, what steps you want to take. 
The very first thing that I recommend doing is giving yourself a manageable list of vocabulary words as well as kanji characters. The reason why I say this is, if you are just blindly studying Japanese and you just open up the book, you are going to quickly feel overwhelmed. You will see lists and lists of words, lists and lists of sentences that you cannot yet read, and you're going to feel lost. Even if you're using a book that is in Romanji, it's going to be going through one ear, right out the other. You're not going to be, you know, obtaining or containing any of this information. It's just too much information overload. You're not going to know what to do with it, especially if you're not living in Japan, like this video of many people that don't actually live here. It's a lot of information that you have no purpose for yet because it doesn't make sense to you at the moment. It takes living here, working here, studying here, dating here, making friends here for the stuff to actually have meaning to you, shopping here, things like that. So, I highly suggest that you have about a list of maybe 10 kanji characters and 20 vocabulary words. If you're not sure where to get these characters or words from, I highly suggest that you buy a Japanese book um, that is made for English the spirit towards English people that are learning Japanese, English speakers that are learning Japanese. Thus, you can have the translation readily available inside of that book. You can easily make photocopies or simply, you know, translate the character onto your phone, onto your computer, whatever, and you can print off and or draw your own flashcards. Make your own flashcards somehow with these characters. I recommend only doing about 10. It makes it very easy. Each and every day, show yourself those 10 cards. Constantly practice them back and forth, both recognizing those characters as well as being able to read them when you see them. I suggest that you start off with um, radicals. They will make it much easier to read things further down the line. Again, your goal should not be, or not again, but let me say it. Your goal is not to know how to write these things. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with extra work as well as give yourself work that's not necessarily needed. It's going to be very, very rare and unlikely that you'll ever need to write in kanji, with the exception of your address, which once again, that can just be written in your mind. Don't give yourself too much work. You want to take things slow and only do what's necessary when it comes to writing. With that said, for these vocabulary words and for these kanji characters, I don't recommend learning the stroke order or anything like that. If you choose to, go ahead by all means. This video is more so for people that are on the lazy side or that feel overwhelmed and don't have enough time to learn how to write all of these things. So, I recommend 10 kanji characters, preferred radicals or commonly used kanji characters, and 20 vocabulary words. The words and characters you should be using should be day-to-day -day stuff that you will see constantly. For example, the kanji for exit or the kanji for a dog or a tree. Things like that. Really basic, simple, kindergarten level work. You can even buy a children's Japanese book to do this stuff. Also, when it comes to vocabulary words, something that made it really easy for me to keep interest is to start off with learning words that you will use every single day. Things that will help you when you go to the store. For example, I wanted to know like, how can I ask for two bags at the grocery store? How can I say I want four of these? Things like that. How do you say this fruit? How do you say this type of meat? How do you say this room, this house, this ceiling? Things like that. Basic words that you need to know. Otherwise, if it's just 20 random words, like 20 random animals, how often are you going to use animal names besides cat and dog? You'll probably never have to say lizard in Japanese. So with that said, don't study unnecessary things like rhino, um, poo, you know, other little things like that. Sure, some of those words do come in handy at random times, but you get what I'm saying. You'll feel more encouraged and motivated to learn if you're learning things that can actually be used in your day-to-day -day life and that you see yourself using right away. It's motivation, it's encouragement, and again, it helps you build your vocabulary for things that you will actually be saying. Why learn you use stuff? How often in English do you say draft? Do you really need to know how to say draft in Japanese or something like flamingo? No. So consider those 20 words. By giving yourself this small goal and not making it where you have to actually learn how to write these things, but rather just be able to read and recognize them when you hear them, your goals are much more attainable. Plus, you can easily divide those 10 times of characters or 20 words within your one week of study time. Your goal is not to necessarily be able to master them within that time, but to pretty much have a general understanding and, yeah, be able to pass your little quiz that you're going to give yourself at the end of that week. Don't give yourself more than 20 words or more than 10 characters because you don't want to overwhelm yourself or forget the things that you've learned thus far. Please also keep in mind that it's better to give yourself a small goal and to learn a few characters and a few words each week and actually be able to memorize them than to give yourself a huge list of a ton of stuff 
not have any recollection of it the next week. Awesome. Something really big that people tend to do, including myself, do not get discouraged. You will have a week or two where you've only memorized five characters, or you only know 10 words out of the 20, etc. That's okay. Do not let that slow you down. Continue working on those words until you get It's okay to go back. It's okay to slow down. It's okay to stop. Because if you do the opposite and you decide, oh, this is too much, I'm getting behind, I don't know this, etc., you will procrastinate and make up excuses. It's much better to have, even if you just focus on five kanji characters each week, than to go each week learning no kanji characters, or, you know, whatever words. Because now, those are five more words that you didn't know last week, or three more kanji characters that you didn't know the week before, versus zero. So if you need to set your bar lower and decide that ten words works better, and five characters, do it. I'm not saving half. I spent weeks where I only focused on two characters. And you want to know what? Well, it might seem like, oh, that's a waste of time. You'll never pass zero, PT, and one, whatever. That's two more characters that I didn't know the week before. Progress is progress. Learning is learning. Work at your own pace. Don't worry about that girl that says she's been there for one year and already passed zero, P, and two. Or that guy that claims he learned how to speak Japanese for one year and one. Focus on yourself and do what works for you. Work at your own pace. As long as you're better than you were last week, that's all that matters. Keep going, push yourself. It's okay to lower your goal. It's better to have learned two or three characters, two or three words, than to have learned nothing like how you've been doing this far. Don't give up. My third and next recommendation, number three, is that you quiz yourself daily. Something that really helped me was before I went to school each day, I used to take out my um, katakana and my hiragana cards, my flashcards, and I would quiz myself and I'd have my friend help me too, and I'd try to quickly get all of them correct, the I, E, A, O, stuff like that. Try to do that by yourself, do it with a friend, whatever works best for you, whoever you have available, family member, whoever is available to help, do it by yourself, do it quietly, speak them out loud, try to do it as fast as you can, you will get better over time. Again, it's really, really important that you do this at least once a day in the morning, and preferably again at night. It is it honestly what taught me how to read is constantly having those flashcards. Um, living in Japan is a huge help as well, but again, this video is more so for those of you that do not live here, because of course I would also say, oh, you know, reading stuff in Japanese when you, you, know, you have the opportunity. For example, I felt super excited, um, you know, as I started learning more and more. I would get in the train over the hey, I recognize that kind of people, you know, Shibuya, or I recognize, you know, that so Shibuya and Hiragana. Little things like that. It makes you feel excited when you see that you are progressing and learning more and more. And when you constantly hear and see the same things, your brain will start to recognize, oh, this means next stop. Oh, this means newspaper. Oh, this means whatever. Again, baby steps. Don't set the bar too high. It's okay to set it low and just focus on a couple of things at a time. Any type of progress is good. Progress is progress, learning is learning, doesn't matter how slow you're doing it. Beyond this using your um, flashcards, another thing that you should also consider doing is what they're done in Katakana, I do recommend learning how to write these characters because you will commonly have to write things such as your know, name, country of origin, things like that, although that would normally be in kanji, but you get what I'm saying. Well, depending on, but that's another, no, no, Katakana, Katakana, so America, things like that. Um, you want to make sure that you do know how to write and or read these things. So I do recommend that you learn how to write Hiragana Katakana. Easy way to do it is simply print off some stencil worksheets and every single day write all of your um, Hiragana, trace them all, all of your Hiragana and Katakana, you know, characters. Trace all of them every single day as soon as you're done practicing reading um, your flashcards. It will become very, very fast. It'll be just like doing your ABCs, tracing the stencil. So again, do, try to do it at least once a day in the morning before you go to work at school, and preferably again before you go to bed. If it is not possible, you're better off doing it once in the morning and you're wide awake, and have it a part of your morning routine if you take your vitamin pill, whatever you do in the morning. Um, it honestly helps you get into that routine of being exposed to Japanese. My fourth recommendation is that you watch the news. I know that for some of you, the news is extremely boring, but honestly, it's very important, especially if you're trying to live for and of study here in Japan. You should want to know what's going on. Now, of course, you can watch things like NHK and English, etc., but I highly suggest that you challenge yourself and consider watching it in Japanese. Don't limit yourself to just NHK. There are other news outlets you can find on YouTube, online, um, all over the place. Consider watching the news in Japanese. 
um, preferably if you can do this in the morning and in the evening, whether it is, you know, through some type of podcast, just listening to it, or being able to physically watch and listen. Both are okay, but of course, preferably if you have the option, it's nice to be able to see while you're watching so you can get used to their body gestures and how they bow and how they look when they're saying steady words and body language and attitude. Um, it really informs you about what's going on in the game, culture wise, but it also gives you great listening practice and teaches you how to kind of talk at a professional, nice business level. This is excellent listening practice once again, and it also can help you build your vocabulary listening to news anchors, um, tell you about what's going on in Japan, tell you about world news, etc. Try your best to listen to important news and media in Japanese. It will seriously help you. My fifth tip and recommendation is that you try to spend about 30 minutes to one hour a day if possible. Again, if it's not possible for you, lower it to five to minutes. Anything that you do is more and better than doing nothing. Room for some progress, a little bit of learning is better than not. I highly recommend apps such as Memorize, um, it Memorize, Memorize, Mesmerize, whatever. Memorize, I believe is what it's called. Um, Rosetta Stone, Duolingo, um, Pascal Kano, um, and the Kanji app. Those are my five app recommendations. There are some other ones that I used to use, but unfortunately they no longer exist. I used to use an app that I think it was called Katakana or something. But it's no longer available, and that is honestly the app that taught me Katakana. Um, I recommend using these apps for a few minutes each day. It will help you both with your reading and writing skills, as well as help with your listening skills for apps such as Memorize. Um, there are several different apps that I'll probably also list below that I use, but I told you the ones right now that came to mind. There's an endless amount of them. It honestly doesn't matter which ones you use. I do recommend paying the extra money to upgrade apps so you can use all of which um, different lessons available within them. Um, they have great pictures, great audio and listening opportunities, and they make it really easy for you to just say, memorize, <laughs> or remember um, the words and vocabulary that you learn in a script for sentence structure to help. Um, Duolingo also is really great with reminding you to keep up with your goal. I'm trying to you know, spend about five minutes studying each day. Again, it's okay if you're just doing five minutes or 10 minutes, but you should try to aim for 30. If it's not possible, it's better to spend three minutes on this app than doing zero. So don't use it as an excuse for all of it. I missed today, so I'm just going to stop learning Japanese. I don't have time. It's okay if you skip it. It's okay if you skip a week, a month, a year. Get back on it. Don't give up. It's all that ultimately matters. I highly suggest that when you use these apps to use headphones, it kind of like immerses yourself into it where you feel like you're like, surrounded by Japanese people or in Japan. But that's just my own two cents. Again, try to spend at least about half an hour, about an episode long. Um, using these apps is great um, listening practice, it's great reading practice. And for some of you, they even have speaking opportunities within the app where they can correct or you know tell you whether you're speaking, saying the words correctly or incorrectly as well. My sixth tip for you is get a couple of books and I recommend instead of trying to speed read through them, I recommend focusing on only about one chapter out of each book per week. This way you are rereading that chapter over and over again, you're saying those sentences and vocabulary words to yourself over and over again, you're listening to them over and over again, and you're practicing with a friend, a partner, whatever, over and over again, and it will stick with you a lot better than if you read through a chapter a day and forget all of the information and vocabulary words that you learn. Plus, when you go back and look throughout the book, you will see how far you have come and how much you have progressed over time. It's also really good to get the reading practice from this, because most books also have both Romanji, Kitagana, and Katakana practice, as well as a little bit of sprinkle and kanji, and some cultural information and background to help you understand the words and why these sentences are said the way that they are, and to help you understand what people look like, talk like, you know, are standing like when they say and they do these things. They give you really good um, imaginary scenarios and examples, and that's the reason why I think that books are actually a pretty great useful tool that are overlooked because everyone wants to use apps these days. My seventh tip is to surround yourself with Japanese stuff. Um, something every day that helped me with learning hiragana and katakana is out of the box of flashcards that I had, when I was in college, I actually hung up the posters that came inside the box on my ceiling so that when I went to bed at night, before I would go to bed, I would literally say all of my hiragana and katakana characters. I would read them out loud, and every time I would, you know, mess up one, I didn't know, you know, how, whatever, what I was like, you know, e, whatever and I would start over and I'd eventually memorize it. I'd drill them into my head. I was constantly looking at them, constantly seeing them, and now I know them right off the bat, thanks to doing that. 
Um, also get other posters that have, you know, Japanese words written on them. Get yourself Japanese games. Change the settings on your phone, the settings on the, the settings. <laughs> Change the settings on your cell phone, on your console, any type of electronic that you have, um, your computer, whatever. Change your settings to Japanese. It will force you to read Japanese, it will force you to learn kanji, and again, it gets your mind into thinking in Japanese. I even bother to do small things like change to standardized military time or whatever. I changed and converted over to Celsius. If you're an American, this is a big deal. I know those of you that are European, Canadian, whatever, you've always been doing this stuff. But for us, it's pretty hard to get used to using things like kilometers and Celsius when all your life you've been using miles and using Fahrenheit. So, these are little things that will help move you into the right direction, get your mind in the whole you know, Japanese mindset, um, change your calendar, um, make it go by you know, Japanese system, you know, reiwa, things like that. Really helps you out. Um, with learning Japanese uh, helps with your reading, helps with your guessing. You don't want to make a mistake and delete all your pictures, do you? Because you don't know which button is delete. So <laughs> it really does um, help you kind of think too. Because of course, even for myself, you're not going to understand all of the kanji characters. You're not really practicing that so much. But again, it helps you become familiar with Japanese. It helps you get used to kanji characters, guess what they mean, have an understanding of what they mean, because you're constantly seeing them and being exposed to them. It will ultimately help you in the long run, especially if you plan to work with or study here in the future. Number eight, of course, everything's not going to be free and easy. This is just common sense advice, but you are at some point going to need to start taking a weekly Japanese lesson. I recommend doing conversational Japanese, everyday stuff that you will actually use in your day-to-day -day life and not a business class for it sake. It's best to start off with real life everyday conversations and over time as you get better with Japanese and of course you can always go up to business. Some people choose to do it the other way around. I'm giving you my own two cents on what I believe is best for me, but you do you, you do what you want. I'm telling you I personally recommend. I recommend taking a weekly conversational lesson for about one hour. It will help you with um, both being able to ask questions, you can learn useful vocabulary that you plan to use that will help you in your day-to-day -day life, as well as it gives you good um, listening practice and someone to actually speak with. It's very important that you vote to be able to talk confidently in Japanese and that you can understand when people that do speak Japanese are actually speaking to you. And what better way than to have a native speaker um, that can converse with you between English and Japanese and help teach you things that you otherwise would not know and could not learn. They will also teach you natural Japanese. So again, I highly recommend that you, know, you take one-on-one -on -one private lessons or a conversational group lesson in which you have a little more freedom and you can choose the direction in which you want your lessons to go in or at least you can comfortably ask questions. Do this once a week, no less than about 50 minutes, preferably for one hour. You will see a huge difference over the course of just a few months. And again, it will also be motivation um, for you to continue studying your vocabulary and your kanji, etc. Because now you don't want to stop off because you don't want to feel embarrassed when you see your teacher or your classmates and you didn't memorize the kanji that they taught you and you forgot the vocabulary words everyone was studying. It's great, it's great motivation. Honestly, it's what helped me out a lot. I didn't want to go to class and feel embarrassed because I didn't memorize the katakana characters that we were studying. So keep that in mind that sometimes it's nice to, you know, just have the extra push by having a you know, tutor or even working with other people that are learning the same language as you because now you feel like you have to answer to someone. You have to you know, show that you're that you studying, that you're progressing. And basically like an accountability partner that you essentially have. My ninth tip is converse with Japanese people on a daily basis. Now I understand you think, oh, I don't live in Japan, I can't do that. Yes, you can. I highly recommend that you download apps and try to find Japanese people to talk to. The more you talk to them, the more you will get used to reading um, different Japanese characters. You'll learn new words, new sentences. You will learn how to talk, um, introduce yourself, talk about hobbies, commonly asked questions, what is and isn't okay, what's common, what's not common, to ask and talk about with people. This honestly helped me learn how to read a lot because I was constantly seeing the same kanji characters over and over again. The same combination of hiragana, kanji, katakana, etc. And now, even if I don't fully understand what a character means by itself, I know what that kanji character means when put together with this one. I know that if you put that kanji character together with this, you know, hiragana, it means this entirely different word. You will start to memorize these patterns. And again, it will help you um, with improving your vocabulary. Now you have new sentences that you can say 
that you previously did not know and you can use those to impress other Japanese people that will think, oh my god, how do you learn? It's so native, blah blah blah. And not worry, you've just been spending months and months and months and years and years and years talking to people online. So you learned how to talk like a native speaker. It's definitely paid off for me. <laughs> so I highly suggest that you, you know, spend time conversing with people, um, but not just messaging. Don't be afraid to video chat or call people. Sure, you're going to have those occasional creeps, but you also have people that just want to talk to a foreigner. You know, like, oh my god, I have a foreign thing. Or, you know, just want to hear a foreigner speak Japanese, whatever, which works out for you. Because again, this is practice for you to speak Japanese. So don't be afraid to converse with people. There are plenty of websites you can use at the language exchanges and even online dating, but you don't have to necessarily use it for dating. You can use it to strictly make friends, which is exactly what I do. It's totally up to you. Maybe you are looking for a partner, so hey, it works out that way as well. And last but not least, number 10, which goes back into 8 and 9, find a native Japanese language exchange partner. This way, you can get basically an extra free lesson each week. Find someone that you authentically want to be friends with, you have things in common, but you guys also have something that the other one wants. You know how to speak English or whatever other language that they want to learn, and they know how to speak Japanese, which is what you want to learn. You can teach them a lot of stuff about your language, they can teach you a lot about their language, it's a give and take thing, and because it's a language exchange and it's free, you can spend countless hours, countless days, weeks, months, years, whatever, getting information from this person with no limit whatsoever. And again, you can switch between, you know, being able to message this person in Japanese, being able to talk to them in Japanese, listen to them in Japanese. It really, really, really makes a huge difference um, when learning Japanese language. Again, there's no one perfect book, there's no one perfect school that will teach you Japanese, you really have to have self-motivation, you have to be strong and not, you know, someone that's easy to give up. You have days where you're tired of it, where you feel like you're not learning anything, you just want to throw in the towel, you feel like it's not needed, and honestly, you can, it's very easy to do. But that's exactly why you have to remind yourself why you're learning this, and remind yourself how far you've come and how much you've worked on. And honestly, just don't get discouraged. I had days even recently where I was like, oh my god, I feel like I've got a plateau. I don't feel like I'm getting any better, if anything, I'm getting even worse. And then I hung up with my friends and I'm like, hey, they don't know what that means or what that you know, says, but I do. Well, I know more than I thought I did. So again, um, constantly, constantly, constantly remind yourself why you are learning. Um, put yourself in an environment where you have to use Japanese. And ultimately, your final goal should be to eventually come to Japan. It's great to be able to actually use all of the Japanese language skills that you have learned in your life, put them into action, versus just sitting at home, and doing nothing with it. This is also why it's very important to have actual Japanese people to interact with and not just be constantly listening and reading stuff. It's very important that you can actually have the opportunity to both speak and listen to Japanese. Reading and writing alone is not enough. You need to be able to hear Japanese and be able to work on your fluency as well as work on speaking in Japanese. You can't do that if you're always shy and afraid of making mistakes. So don't be afraid of making mistakes, they're gonna happen. I still remember to this day and it haunts me. I used to say inade when I was done with ordering something at a restaurant. I had no idea that I was saying that wrong until someone finally kind of laughed at me and corrected me. I didn't have any idea. My boyfriend must not have heard me or he didn't bother to correct me. My friends didn't hear me didn't bother to correct me. I don't know. I don't think I ever said it with my boyfriend because he normally ordered. So there you go. That's why it's important to go out on your own, do things by yourself, and not be afraid to make mistakes. They pay off, you'll get corrected eventually. You have to remember that you're not going to perfect or get better at Japanese overnight, and you can't learn it just sitting at home and doing nothing but staring at your book and reading the same manga pages. You have to actually go out of your way to speak to people, out of your way to listen to people, and this way you will improve your confidence and vocabulary. You can't be afraid of making mistakes. I know it's embarrassing. I know you don't want to get after it. I know, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, Japanese people are actually the easiest people to learn a language with. They will seriously cheer you on for the smallest Japanese language ability because they unfortunately stereotypically believe that foreigners cannot speak Japanese. So saying something as simple as Hajime Rashke and introducing yourself and telling them your favorite color or whatever, they instantly think, oh my god, your Japanese is so good. It doesn't take much time for us to do which ultimately kind of encourages you to learn more. Now eventually, as you get more advanced, this starts to seem like you're the grading, and it's like, dude, all I said was my favorite color was pink, and that's a katakana English word. <laughs> but 
with that said, when you're starting off, it is more good to make sure you're good about yourself and encourages you to keep learning. I think for most people, or if you do the opposite, make you feel all right, you know, Japanese, I don't need to do anything. So, again, always give yourself the opportunity to make mistakes. Don't be afraid. Making mistakes can actually be a good thing, an embarrassment from it, because after you feel that embarrassment, as my German friend told me, it makes you not want to do it again, so you will remember the correct way to say it. And it sounded like such a small piece of advice that I was like, yeah, that's so true. After I finally heard that it was not me, my dad, <laughs> I never made that mistake again because I was embarrassed out of my mind. I had no idea that I had been saying that with confidence for it so long. But that's because, once again, I didn't get that line from my book. I got it from listening at restaurants. I thought, oh, I'm saying you're right, and I'm done with to say you, my dad. <laughs> no idea. So, again, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if this wasn't the type of video that you were looking for. Again, I'm just telling you my small little basic tips on what I used to do. Um, basically, good information. Use a variety of resources. If you're just learning from one person or from one book or one YouTube channel, you will get tired. It will become old. It will become repetitive. And you won't want to do it anymore. Watch different TV shows. Listen to different music. Buy different Japanese things. Try different things. You have to constantly expose yourself to different things. Your brain is like a child with ADHD. No offense, my brother has it. I don't care, I'm not going to go through all that PC stuff with you guys. My point is, you have to keep it constantly entertaining. It cannot sit still and learn this one. You have to give it a variety of different ways to learn, to obtain, and to enjoy the information that it is getting. Don't give up, keep trying your hardest, and set small goals for yourself. If you fall off, you get lazy, you only uh, study three characters a week instead of ten, or you only learn two out of the five that you have, that's fine. You now know two more than you knew last week or the month before that. If you go a whole week, a whole month, a whole year without learning any Japanese, you stop, go cold turkey, that's fine. Make sure you pick back up next year, next month, next week. Do not make excuses for why you stop altogether. Keep going. You're only going to get older, never get closer to that. You cannot stop. You have to keep trying. You will get better. It will become easier for you. This is the same person that froze up and forgot how to say thank you to her cab driver in Japanese because I had a full on anxiety and panic attack on my first day here in Tokyo. So trust me, you will get better. You can do it. And honestly, living in Japan, working here, studying, dating, being in situations where you are by yourself like I am right now. Honestly, not living with my boyfriend at the moment has seriously helped me improve my Japanese a lot. Because of course, used to rely on him so much, he didn't have to talk to me, all the order, all the paperwork, everything. I didn't have to think in the way to my food and my because he would be the one to tell me when to go off the train. He ordered my food, he did my paperwork, he set my bank accounts, he got my apartment, anything that I needed, show him. And by doing that, I only hurt myself because I wasn't learning Japanese. I was letting him be all of the way for me. I didn't bother with it. I thought I was learning from him because I asked him, Oh, Joe, how do you say this? What do Japanese people think about that? But ultimately, my brain was just an English man. And for him, he's learning English for me, but I was learning him Japanese. So don't cheat yourself like that. That's that. I can go on forever with this video. I hope you found it useful, helpful. If you did, please give me a like and leave a comment down below. Or please give me your advice down below and what do you recommend? And if you haven't already, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos to give you help if you find some work great here, study here, and the time. I would also appreciate it if you would like my Facebook page. I have an um, Instagram and Twitter account and a Snapchat as well. So I'd appreciate if you would like and follow those pages too. Don't forget to leave some of your own and your study advice down below. And as I've mentioned before in other videos, honestly, you don't need to learn Japanese before you come to Japan. You will learn after getting here as long as you make an, a conscious effort to do so. And in all honesty, unless you're blind, you're going to learn even if you don't want to because you're going to be surrounded by it and most people cannot speak English to you. So you're going to have to compromise and basically take them and learn Japanese. Don't stress out, don't freak out of it. You don't need it to study here, you don't need it to work here, you don't need it to save you, you don't need it to make friends here. People will be more fascinated and interested in your English language ability than Japanese anyway. So that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you will watch another video. Goodbye.